Also tonight, as discussion and debate continues over whether to continue the so-called millionaire's tax or perhaps look at other ways of raising revenue, one state senator is focused on where the extra money might go. He's continuing the millionaire's tax as is would bring in an estimated $4 billion, and Senator Jeff Klein thinks that money should go to the middle class. He is proposing a system where people who would qualify for tax breaks would get the money back on a debit card. Joining me now to explain more about how this might work is Senator Jeff Klein. Senator, it is a pleasure to see you. Pleasure, Liz. So uh, this is fascinating. It, it's a little Robin Hood, isn't it? You know, rob from the rich, give to the poor, you, and like really give it to them on a card. Well, you know, again, I think, you know, a fairer tax system, uh, you know, naturally would do that. Uh, because when you're uh, earning $3 million a year or $40,000 a year, and you're being taxed at the same rate, 6.8%, uh, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, having uh, the wealthy uh, pay their fair share uh, in a slightly higher rate, taking that money, giving it back to the middle and working class, having them spend uh, by using a, a debit card, uh, I think really is going to uh, jumpstart our economy. But and, you know, I, th I get t yeah. Why a debit card, forgive me for the interruption, instead of, say, a tax break for the middle class, which I think is what most people expect would happen if you started changing the tax code to have people at the higher end pay a little more and people in the middle or at the lower end, uh, end pay less? I think there are two reasons, Liz. Uh, first and uh, foremost, uh, I think the tax breaks uh, that were proposed in the past uh, really didn't work as well as they should have uh, in jump-starting our economy and getting our economy back on track. Uh, the next reason is I want people to spend. Uh, I want people to uh, buy books for their kids, clothes for their kids, clothes for themselves, eat in restaurants, stay in hotels, you know, spend the money, uh, you know, help small businesses. Uh, around our state of New York. That would be $4 billion of spending uh, all being spent in New York, uh, which I think is going to help our economy tremendously well, over the next year. Well, that would be, of course, if you kept the current threshold at $250,000, right? I mean, you would prefer to see it there instead of uh, Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver's proposal, which would be to start it as a, quote, true millionaire's tax at a million and more? Well, you know, we're going to be working uh, the Independent Democratic Conference on, on a new plan, uh, which will probably unveil in a couple of weeks. Huh. Uh, you know, we can change it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be $250,000 as the start. It could be a half a million. It could be a million. But remember, uh, the higher we go uh, up the income scale, the less money we have to give back to the working class. Right, right. So we have to take a look to see, you know, how much money would really be uh, suitable and really would mean something uh, in uh, money back uh, to the working class. Remember, you know, a family of four uh, who makes $100,000 uh, would get uh, $1,700 back yeah. under my plan. It's that, not, that's real money. It's a lot of money, actually. But here's the, here's the trick. If you have a tax break and you pay a little less in taxes, mo most likely you're just you're going to have that money, that money that you earn. You're not giving it to the government. And under your plan, you get a card, you get the money back, but there's no guarantee that uh, that, that person would spend it here. I mean, why would they not go to, I don't know, Vegas or Connecticut or, I don't know, Jersey, wherever they might go? Well, well, you know, the state tax department is going to be, uh, under my legislation, uh, would be in charge of uh, administering the debit card. And we'll you'll figure out some ways. You know, I think uh, we have some smart business people out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll make sure uh, that that money is spent in New York. And I think it really, Liz, it goes about, it goes, I think, uh, this past year, I think, taught uh, me a lot. And I think it taught everyone else a lot. Uh, we were able to come up uh, with $13 billion in savings, some of them cuts, of course, uh, without raising taxes and without borrowing. Uh, I think we can accomplish the $3 billion deficit uh, that we have this year, uh, eliminate it, uh, increase education spending by 4% and uh, health care by 4%, which we're in line to do. So why would we just be taxing people uh, to spend more? Hmm. Uh, that's why I think it's important if we're taxing people at a higher rate, if we're taxing people at a fairer rate, uh, it's incumbent upon us to give money back to the working class. So, so you're saying, just uh, just want to make sure I understand this, you're saying if in fact the tax code was changed and, so, and it generated more income, the income should not and you would not support that being used to pay down the $3.5 billion deficit? Well, you know, that, that's, that's a work in process. I'm not going to uh, pigeonhole myself into, you know, that specific area. But I think the concept that I'm advocating is the right one. Hmm. Uh, it's uh, putting more money back in the pockets of the people who need it most, uh, the working and middle class, who, by the way, are going to use that money to spend. And did and, I hear uh, you right? Gonna, did I hear you right, I'm sorry, Senator, that you're going to come up with your own 
tax plan proposal, and it's going to be coming out in a few well, weeks the, before the budget well, then? Well, you got to remember, Liz, this is a, a plan that I unveiled uh, three years ago. Right. Uh, so uh, the IDC is going to sit down over the next couple of weeks uh, and uh, tinker uh, with this specific plan, maybe look at some other plans, and come up with our own uh, sort of a high earn a tax plan. And I think it's going to look uh, very similar to what uh, we're talking about today. You know, uh, the IDC, Independent Democratic uh, Group, I think has been more prolific in putting out reports and bills and, and really pretty powerful, m more so than I th people expected when you formed it. How long ago was it now? Uh, we're going to we're approaching our one-year anniversary. That's right. Okay, so you still you have four members, but because of the 30-32 split in the Senate with 30 Democrats, including you four, and then the 32 Republicans, you are in a position to really be the swing votes and to be potentially the kingmakers. I mean, do you see yourself as going back to the Democratic conference if, in fact, they are in a position to control the chamber after 2012? Well, first, Liz, let me thank you, you know, for the nice words about the uh, I'm the not IDC trying to be nice, and, Senator. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, 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 each, and each and every day, you know, I think the decision was made uh, was a good one. Uh, this is the ability to govern in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, you know, put forward uh, democratic principles like a fair attack system uh, and try to push it in a bipartisan fashion. You know, quite frankly, when you see what went on, uh, in Washington and the failure of the super committee, uh, they really should be learning from what the IDC is doing in Albany, uh, working with Democrats, working with Republicans, raising the issues of the day uh, to get things done. So I think, you know, let's leave the politics, you know, aside until the next election. We have plenty of time for that. Uh, but I think what we're proving each and every day uh, that you can govern in a bipartisan fashion and get the job done. Well, fair enough. First of all, I don't want anybody to think that I'm, you know, off my game here. You're going to ruin my reputation and people are going to start <laughs> thinking that I'm nice, which is terrible. No, seriously, though, I mean, you actually created, I think you did, a political entity by which you would be able to support candidates. So you're looking to grow your numbers is my expectation. I mean, you would then be even more significant as a conference than you are now. Well, yeah, there's no secret that we formed uh, the IDC initiative, which is our own PAC. Uh, it's going to be used to help the four of us, uh, making sure that uh, we're all reelected. And yes, uh, you know, I'd love to pick up uh, some additional members, you know, like-minded Democrats uh, who understand uh, the business of governing and uh, putting the hyperpartisanship aside uh, until Election Day uh, and governing each and every day and raising the issues like the IDC has been doing over the past year. Yeah, but where would you find those people? I mean, would you, you would have to either run them against Republicans, and you've been actually in working quite well with the Republicans, or you'd have to run them against former colleagues of yours or current colleagues. It's hard, hard to say, but fellow Democrats. Well, you know, the first step is uh, raising money for our PAC, uh, which we have been doing. Uh, over the last uh, couple of months. And, you know, we'll see what the uh, upcoming election season looks like. But, you know, I think uh, most of the money uh, will be used to ensure the re-election of the four IDC members. And towards your re-election, I mean, there have been reports that you actually won't be f facing any significant challenges from the Republicans because they like having you around. Let's just be, let's just be. Well, you know, Liz, the only thing I can say is, uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, I, I should be so lucky, as they say. Uh, I've had a race, uh, you know, in every, uh, every two years. Yeah. Remember, I won a district that was a Republican district I for do. 100 years. Uh, I gave up a safe seat in the assembly to do that. And uh, I'm sure I'll have a general election again. So, uh, and, uh, you know, I welcome it. If, if it doesn't happen, uh, I consider myself uh, one of the luckiest guys in Albany. So no peace pact, then, is what you're saying with the GOP? Uh, there, there's no peace pact. It's, uh, it's really, it has been and it always will be. Uh, about governing. And I think, uh, you know, the ability uh, to push a legislative agenda like we're talking about today, a fair attack system, uh, the uh, tax relief proposals that were put forth by the IDC, uh, these are the things that I think the people of this state want. You know, good government is good politics. Good politics is good government. And I think our important, most important issue, and the reason why we formed uh, the IDC, uh, was to win back the voters' trust. And I think uh, we're doing that each and every day. Do you think the Democrats have a shot at winning, winning back the Senate? Uh, again, you know, uh, I, I left uh, the uh, Democratic conference. Uh, we formed the IDC. Uh, I'd be less than honest if I said that I was happy uh, with the present leadership in the Democratic conference. Hmm. Uh, I still believe they're not making a compelling argument on why they should be returned to power. And uh, I just, you know, every day uh, get up and 
look for ways that uh, we can make a positive difference in people's lives. You were mentioned at some point as a potential leader. Are you still interested? Well, again, I, I never really was. It was kind of like always orchestrated that I was always there to take out Malcolm Smith and yeah. John Sampson, which, you know, I never did, never attempted to do. No. Nope. Uh, I was uh, a loyal deputy majority leader to two of the leaders. Uh, and again, I think it's, uh, it's much better now. I think it's uh, the ability uh, to get things done, uh, to put politics aside uh, where politics doesn't belong in governing. Uh, we have plenty of time to deal with those things when the elections roll around. And, uh, you know, I, get, I, I think uh, that's what we do best. When the election comes, we'll have plenty of time to talk politics. Are you, are you expecting just imparting a more difficult year this year? I mean, last year, one might argue, or we're coming to the end of the first year of Governor Cuomo's tenure, that he had a, a, quite a successful year and a honeymoon period, if you will. He whipped the legislature into shape. He got what he wanted. But things are n not looking so rosy on the financial front. So what, might it be difficult for him to get what he needs in the next year? Well, you know, again, uh, Governor Cuomo has been the most successful governor in my memory, in my uh, tenure in Albany, uh, and I have the utmost faith that uh, he'll get the job done. Uh, he's smart, uh, he's hardworking, uh, he understands uh, the needs of the people of the great state of New York, and uh, again, I think uh, he'll be successful. Hmm. Uh, in uh, this year and maybe even more successful than he was last year. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well obviously we'll be following that. But Senator, when that uh, report comes out or your proposal on taxes come out, we'll of course be reporting on it. Maybe we'll have you back. I want to thank you very much for coming on. It's always a pleasure, Liz.